What's up, Taffers? I'm Matti Mali, aka Hidrosic Actor, and welcome to the season 1 finale of Mystery Game Box. Yeah, I think it's best that I take a break occasionally because playing video games is really time consuming. But before that happens, we'll start with uh, another retrospective uh, with the father of all stealth games, the original Thief trilogy. So let's uh, sneak into the secrets of the first game from 1998, Thief, the Dark Project. wasn't the first of its kind as Metal Gear Solid was released two months prior, but it was arguably the first where the focus was purely on stealth and would later influence such franchises as Splinter Cell and Hitman. Well, most of the stealth games inspired by it also have bigger emphasis on action, but whatever. The project leader is Greg Lopiccolo, who would later go to helm both Guitar Hero and Rock Band series. <laughs> Quite an odd career turn. And as the writer is Terry Brosius, also known from Dishonored, basing on the original concept by Ken Levin, who would later go to her Bioshock series. I have to note before we start that while I did manage to get this game to work on a modern computer, it uh, refused to play any of the cutscenes, so I had to take them from YouTube. A shout out to this person who. Put them in there. In his career-making debut role, Stephen Russell plays Garrett, a master thief who used to be a street urchin in the medieval slash steampunk city called The City. Really imaginative, guys. Until he was taken in by the mysterious keepers, who deal with prophecies and stuff. From them he learns how to hide in shadows, move quietly and uh, do exercises. Good job. <laughs> Most of the extras are overperforming, but all the important named characters have solid voice acting, especially Mr. Russell's interpretations of the gruff uh, complacement, yet so charmingly snarky protagonist creates uh, one of the greatest video game characters of all time. Even just a simple mission briefing oozes charisma. I have a simple job planned for this evening. Break into a guarded mansion, steal another fat nobleman's priceless trinket, and leave quietly. Lord Bafford is out of town, and rumor has it that the captain of his house guard went with him as a bodyguard. The time is ripe for a bit of burglary. Garrett indeed left the keepers to start a lucrative thiefing carrier instead. About half of the game's 12 missions, 15 the digitally more easy to find gold version, are breaking in somewhere to steal valuables, usually from corrupt aristocrats, though he has occasional clashes with the strict religious sect the Hammerites. The other half is robbing tombs or other such haunted places that are infested with unnatural creatures of all kinds. These levels have caused some divide among the players, because uh, some want the uh, thief games to be only about thiefing and consider these kind of tomb raiding levels to be distracting and ill-fitting. Personally though, I love this kind of variation. Uh, one of my most memorable gaming moments was when, uh, after fighting mostly against humans with few zombies thrown into the mix, I suddenly see this guy for the first time. I don't know what that uh, dinosaur frog creature is called, in fact even Garrett is unsure what he's stumbled into, but it made me excited to see what kind of weird stuff the game will t throw at me next. Besides, uh, when the game is mostly about stealth, uh, does it really matter whose eyes you're trying to avert? There are some combat elements, sure, but cards are best to be avoided as they can drain your health quite fast. Best way for dealing most opponents is to hit them in the head with blackjack and make them fall unconscious, though for some reason people still act like I killed them. Oh well, not the weirdest bug I encountered. Garrett does have other gadgets in his arsenal, but some of them like flash bombs and speed potions are completely useless, as I can just load a save. But I guess they have more uses on the higher difficulties. Arrows on the other hand do come in plenty of use. Besides the normal ones, there's water, fire, moss, rope and noise arrows, and each of them are integral for solving environmental and navigational puzzles. What's that? You want to know more about the story? Funny thing is that there's not much of it. 
I mean, it's interesting and all, but it doesn't really start until the fifth or sixth mission. Uh, basically, the first third of the game is just uh, Garrett's slice of life. The plot motion putting event is when the enigmatic Victoria, played by Terry Brosius, that's Garrett to retrieve a sword from an eccentric nobleman Constantine's mansion. After that, Wild Ride turns out that Constantine himself, who is played by Geoffrey Spaulding, gave Garrett that assignment as a test. I always found it odd that Garrett's alarm bells haven't started to ring yet, even though he visited Constantine's mansion that has unexplained vegetation, bizarre architecture and, you know, the freaking void. Yep. Just your average eccentric nobleman, folks. Nothing to see here. What exactly is this item? It is the gemstone called the Eye, for its unusual... Appearance. Yes. Kept hidden in the sealed cathedral deep inside the halls of the scum Hammerites. Oh, but forgive me. You are, possibly, friendly with the Order of the Hammer. No. Fanatics make unreliable friends. Excellent. By the way, these cutscenes are very stylish with the use of silhouettes and shadow and light effects and those cryptic uh, scripture texts you don't understand until much later. Uh, granted, uh, they are probably partially made this way because the in-game models look like paper mache dolls, but this is a great example of uh, achieving much with uh, working around the limitations. As for environments, they are rather good looking and use shadow and light to create effect. Special mention goes to dynamic sound design by Eric Brosius that is excellent in giving hints about your surroundings. The levels are both well and not well built. They are big and vast which does offer opportunities for exploration, but they also tend to be maze-like, which can cause frustration when the key to a safe is in the opposite end of a huge tunnel network. I'm looking at you, the Thief Guild level added to the Gold Edition. The extra levels do break the pacing of the narrative, but I thought at least the new Mage Guild level was rather fun. While uh, it is not as refined as some of its followers, Thief the Dark Project deserves to be experienced. Time has been less kind to some of its graphical aspects, the levels can sometimes get a little too massive, and the AI isn't particularly clever on today's standards, but the gloomy horror escape atmosphere and core gameplay are presented in such finest style. The magnificent usage of darkness and salt in this fascinating world lays a solid foundation for a truly memorable rock experience. Eventually I'll tackle with the Segur game the Metal Age, but as I mentioned before, I'm now going to take a break from this series. Mystery Game Box will return in... Um, probably mid-June will be a good place. But don't worry, I'll have something on this channel during that time. And when this show returns, uh, I'll start with the Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion, so that's for the fate, eh? eh? So, if you like this series, spread the word. Until the next video, thanks for your time.